they can win the election. But if anyone wants to know just how bad it's going to be when the socialized health care kicks in, just ask the vets. They have obviously been experiencing problems for decades. And Obama was angry in his press conference yesterday, and he said, caring for our veterans is not an issue that just popped up in recent weeks. And of course, you know, he knows this is not a new issue, even though he tried to say that he just learned about it from television. But Breitbart points out that that hasn't stopped several leftists in the press from suggesting that not only is the VA hunky-dory, it is a model for how socialized medicine, including Obamacare, should work. And I'll quote just one of them. This is Business Week reported in 2006. A nationwide health system that is run and financed by the federal government provides the best medical care in America. It's true. If you want to be sure of top-notch care, join the military. But rather than hear about how things go down at the Department of Veterans Affairs from a press release, we are going to be actually speaking with a former employee of the VA. That's veteran Kristen Megan. She joins Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs coming up later in the show. But we're not only hearing about veterans dying from waiting too long to receive care, we also hear about the veterans being over-prescribed medication. It's the first go-to with socialized medicine to get five or six different pills for insomnia or anxiety um, and depression. But now that's kind of the go-to with children. Children as young as two and three years old are being prescribed ADHD medicine. According to a uh, data compiled by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 10,000 American two and three year olds are being medicated for ADHD. Now obviously, developmentally, you are supposed to be scattered and disorganized as a toddler. Child psychiatrist Dr. Nancy Rappaport says this is appalling and irresponsible. She's been diagnosing and treating children with ADHD for more than 20 years and says she certainly never treats children under four years old with this medication because stimulant medications like Ritalin and Adderall haven't been studied in children that young. She goes on to say that a lot of these children are from poor families, so there may be a difference in their ability to stay focused because you don't know what's going on at home. Sometimes a lot of their behavior can be them signaling the difficulty that they're in, not to mention the foods we eat have a direct effect uh, contributing to these ADHD behaviors, the food coloring, the preservatives that are in there, all of the sugar these children are ingesting. That plays a huge part in it. But rather than get to the bottom of that and you know clean out our diets and detox what our children are, are feeding themselves, let's just dope them up with drugs that we have no idea what the long-term effects are going to be on these children and their development. But that is the new norm. Parents, that was the plan the whole whole time to get the parents out of the home, keep them too busy to raise their children, and then send them to the schools so that the state can train them in the ways that the state wants our kids to be, which is, you know, little robots, uh, doped up robots on drugs that haven't even been tested on these children. And they have succeeded in getting both parents out of the home. People are so busy now, they don't even have time to teach their kids how to ride bikes anymore. Now they've got coaches uh, to pay $90 an hour to teach their kids to ride bikes. Apparently, it is a booming business. Um, but now, you know, what is this? Parents in America are just too busy working that they can't help their kids and be there for their children through this incredibly pivotal stage in their development. And this is, of course, all part of the master plan to seize the children. Now, coming up, the CIA promised earlier this month that it will no longer have these fake vaccine campaigns as the kind that they used to capture Osama bin Laden. Well, apparently in the country where they put on these fake vaccine campaigns, the residents there said, we're not going to take your American vaccines because we know you're just trying to sterilize us and spy on us. And now polio has reemerged. That's right. This almost eradicated disease is now making a comeback thanks to the CIA using humanitarian efforts as war tactics. So that's coming right up. And then Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs speaks with Kristen Megan. She has more to say about the VA. Stick around.
The CIA admits fake vaccination programs are used as tools of spycraft. Amid a deadly backlash and resurgence of polio in Pakistan, the White House was forced to promise that fake vaccines will no longer be used to catch terrorists. It was revealed in 2011 that the CIA enlisted a Pakistani doctor to run a bogus Hep B campaign to help capture Osama bin Laden. The CIA used the fake vaccines as a way to obtain DNA samples from children living at the Abbottabad compound. The agency hoped to confirm that bin Laden was at that compound by comparing the DNA obtained from the children with a sample from the al-Qaeda chief's late sister. News of the CIA's fake vaccine program caused an armed backlash against immunization workers in the area, reportedly killing 56 people in the past two and a half years. Another result of the CIA's actions? Many Pakistani parents refused vaccines for ailments like polio, likely causing a resurgence of the almost eradicated disease. Clearly, a line needs to be drawn between humanitarian efforts and war tactics, Their abuse of trust means the disease is now spreading to other countries. And it's certainly not the only time the CIA has been caught using vaccine programs to do some dirty work. The Tuskegee syphilis experiment left hundreds of black males dead between 1932 and 1972. The men thought they were receiving free health care, but were actually being experimented on while access to syphilis-curing penicillin was denied. Victims of the study included wives who contracted the disease and children born with congenital syphilis. In October 2010, the U.S. formally apologized to Guatemala for conducting similar experiments on prisoners, soldiers, and patients in a mental hospital in the 1940s. And Merck vaccine scientist Dr. Maurice Hilleman admitted that dirty vaccines carrying traces of SV40, AIDS, and cancer viruses were being administered to Americans but they were first being tested on the Russians. So I brought African greens, and I didn't know we were importing AIDS virus at the time. (laughs) (laughs) And it was you who introduced AIDS virus to the country. No, that's right, but yellow fever vaccine had leukemia virus in it, and, you know, this is in the days of very crude science. I just think this virus may have some long-term effects. Mm -hmm. And he said, what? Cancer. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I love it. And I love it. Go ahead. Yeah. The jokes that were going around was, gee, we would win the Olympics because uh, the Russians would all be loaded down with tumors. <laughs> this is where the vaccine was being tested. This was this was yeah, right. so. This is proof that even way back then, they knew vaccines would cause cancer. But even before the CIA's hoax vaccine program was revealed, the Taliban in Pakistan fiercely opposed Western-backed vaccination campaigns, claiming that they were just secret efforts to sterilize Muslim children. That idea is not so far-fetched, considering what Bill Gates had to say about reducing population growth. Uh, Probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. Uh, That's back from high school algebra. But let's, let's take a look. Uh, First, we've got population. Uh, The world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. And the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is committing $10 billion over the next 10 years to make it the most aggressive decade ever, rolling out new vaccines to poor nations around the world. And this is, of course, in alignment with the diabolical master population scheme meant to cull the world of what the authoritarian scumbags see as useless feeders. The National Security Study Memorandum 200 was completed in 1974 by the U.S. National Security Council under the direction of Henry Kissinger. It detailed the implications of worldwide population growth for U.S. security and overseas interests. The gist, population growth in the least developed countries is a concern to U.S. national security because it would tend to risk civil unrest and political instability in those countries that had a high potential for economic exploitation. Basically, a larger population could rise up against the globalists. And due to the U.S.'s increasing need for minerals from abroad, the policy gives paramount importance to population control measures in those countries. NSSM 200 recommends that U.S. leadership influence national leaders and that 
Worldwide support for this population control should be sought through mass media and other education programs led by the UN, USIA, and USAID. Not surprisingly, the report states, no country has reduced its population growth without resorting to abortion. Ah, and ladies, you just thought they wanted you to have a choice in the matter. In actuality, it's just further proof of the racist agenda of eugenicists to sterilize minorities and convince them to abort their babies. This idea of population control has been around for decades and probably much longer. It's backed by powerful economic interests to cull the world population of the useless feeders so corporate giants can exploit world resources unimpeded.